All right, so I've been making ducted fans for over a year now, and I've used FDM 3D printing for pretty much all of it. As many people have pointed out, it's not the best way to get the detail you really need for something like a propeller, and going layer by layer is generally the least precise way to 3D print anyway. However, it's by far the cheapest, and I hate spending money, so welcome to the 3D print inducted fan project. My previous designs have gotten a little over 450 grams of thrust, which I'm pretty happy with, but I got this one on video to get well over 1000 grams, so I'm pretty stoked. Here's what I changed and how you can get 1000 grams of thrust at home with an Ender 3 and a $10 Outrunner motor. The 450 gram version was a 70mm 11 bladed EDF that I spent a crazy amount of time and filament optimizing. I had a pretty complex fan profile that I barely made work with my Ender 3s. I had a long thrust tube and a very big intake lip that I was actually able to do a CFD project on when I was an undergrad, so that was pretty cool. I felt like I had pretty much maxed out that project without spending a lot more effort, uh, like the CFD I did. So I kind of put that project on the back burner until I was playing around with 120mm EDF at work and realized that I could 3D print this a lot easier. FDM is great for printing pretty much anything on the ducted fan except the fan blades itself, and scaling the entire thing up meant that I could print the larger fan blade a lot more easily. So I took the old design, scaled it up, uh, made a very simple five-bladed fan with a basic airfoil profile and a rectangular extrusion and just tried it out. The fan blade did need supports to print, but after a couple tries, it printed extremely cleanly using pretty minimal tree supports. And like I said, the rest of the ducted fan is super easy to print. It consists of this duct that prints in one go with a lip that's already attached, a pretty aggressive nose cone that shapes the oncoming flow, and a tail that attaches to the back of the duct to decrease flow separation. Again, all of these parts were taken right off my original design, and so at this point the tolerances were pretty perfect and assembling the fan was just butter. Before I get to the testing, I just wanted to showcase the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. I personally use their services for this ducted fan project in the past, and they're a really reliable and lightning quick way to get complex parts from your computer right to your doorstep. For example, they printed these nylon gears that I ended up using in a dual axis fan. And if you know anything about SLS printing, you'll know that I had no way of doing that myself at home. So whether you need PCBs, professional CNC machine parts, or just don't want to spend hours of your life tinkering with your cheap printers and manufacturing parts yourself, you should 100% use PCB Way services. They have a really dialed in system and website that makes ordering parts from them so easy. So thank you guys, they've been a super consistent partner of this project and are just a joy to work with. So next, I needed a way to test thrust, and thankfully, I have another pre-designed solution that I've talked about ad nauseum on this channel. It's a lever that uses equidistant arms and a kitchen scale to read rotational force as grams. I reprinted a slightly modified version in PETG, making it stronger than it was before, and decided to clamp it into a vise. After this, I was pretty much good to just spin it up, but before I test it, I do this thing where I oversize the propeller by a very small amount, probably like a tenth of a mil, just enough to feel faint friction when I spin the propeller, and then run it inside the duct for about 5 minutes at a pretty low RPM. This essentially sands the fan and duct down to get as small of a fan gap as I can with the tolerances I'm able to produce. As you can see from these inconsistent red marks, my tolerance issues actually arise because the fan isn't perfectly concentric in the duct, so that kind of sucks but I'm still happy with this fan duct cap. It's actually less than one of the OEM ones that I had lying around. Now I was able to test and I ended up just ripping it. At around 50% RPM, it started to get extremely loud and shaky. And so setting it to 100% throttle was actually super scary. Uh, but I had to do it at least once for science and I ended up breaking a thousand grams, which absolutely smashed my previous record. Bigger is 100% better. With a weight of a little over 200 grams with the motor included, this has well over five times the rest of weight, um, and this is using heavy PLA plus with a lot of infill, so it could be a lot lighter. First and foremost, I really have no clue if my thrust testing method is actually valid. It's really only useful for testing my designs against each other on the same setup, which I have done in the past, but I think the way I accelerated the fan super quickly probably means that this lever scale method is an unreliable way of testing thrust, especially now that I'm producing some crazy vibrations. Regardless, it's a huge advancement in my inducted fan journey. I've doubled my max thrust, and this was with a fan and an inlet lip that I threw together in like three minutes. It felt like I hit a plateau with the 70mm version, but scaling this project suddenly made it a lot more viable than it already was. 
And so as always, let me know what you guys think. Um, if you have some good suggestions, I'll more than likely put it in my next iteration.